best thing to do with the old Ryobis. Just throw them over the old hedge. Ooh, yeah, that's it. Uh, uh, hi, uh, welcome to another episode of uh, Mixed Miles and Mower Man. And I was just getting this Roby um, strimmer from a bloke across the other side of a hedge. Uh, apparently, it doesn't work. The reason it doesn't work is quite simple. And straight off the bat, I'll tell you why it doesn't work. It's got the name Ryobi written on the side of it. So that'd be why, hip hip, that'd be why it doesn't, it doesn't work. <coughs> Now, lots of my friends have got Ryobis, and um, nine times out of ten, what are you doing, Doc? Come, Doc, here. Well, nine times out of ten, they don't work because lots of people put the wrong fuel on them. That's the main reason why, okay? <clears throat> now, a gentleman said to me, I think he lives in Chittasset, he said to me, I've got a Ryobi, do you work them? I went, uh, 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 not really. Um, don't like to. And uh, he said it don't work. So, I said I'll have a look at it for him. We'll have a little nose, see what it's doing, see what it ain't doing, go from there. If we can fix it for him, that'd be cool, right? But um, I don't hold up much hope just because they're not all that. So um, we'll have a look at it. Now he said it was a bit of a pickle to start, that's what he's saying. But I have um, tried to start it. And honestly, it says eight, give it eight pumps, which is a bit much really, but here you go. We give it eight pumps, turn it on, give it a pull. On choke, that fired. Off choke. So it starts up. Second to hit the gas though. Foggy. And that's still on half choke. If I turn that off choke, it's all the way up. That's not a very well puppy. Now the first thing you want to be doing is checking for spark arresters, all that sort of stuff, but I've got a feeling it's going to need carburetor work. So let's get up on the bench, quick look at it, see how we get on. Right, so right be up on the bench. Um, so yeah, me looking at things like spark arresters in here, if it's got one, and they don't, and they don't all have them, especially over here in the old UK. Now this might have one. So in the exhaust, um, what sometimes happens is, is that the exhaust all gets bunged up and there could be a spark arrestor gauze in here. Now I'm going to get a little tiny, looks like a bit of Torx bit in there. I'm going to remove the, what looks to be like a spark arrestor. I'm going to remove that because that might be bunged up and that could be the only thing that is holding this little tiny strimmer back if they come undone. So inside here, let me just show you what I'm talking about before I start going too, 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 um, too mad. Like, let me just loosen that off. Right, so here, inside here, them two bolts there, one there, one there. It's still a bit warm, but go careful. And one over here somewhere, there'll be one just there. That's the one I'm after. Because inside there, let me get a little tiny pointer, there's a little tiny gauze. You see it there? Little tiny gauze inside there? That's the bit we want out. Right, so it'll be uh, one, two, one. One down the bottom, that one there, that one there, and I think there'll be one at the top which you can't get to, no doubt. Probably is. So I might have to remove the whole back casing as well. So it's quite a bit to come off of here. So let me get you repositioned, and then we get set up here, and then we'll, we'll go from there, try and get this, um, all this off. That shouldn't be too bad, to be fair. Pull cord off. Oh, not pull cord, a uh, back assembly off. Then we get to the exhaust. And we go from there. I'm pretty sure there's one right here. Yeah, there's one right up in there. Why don't you put drill a hole just there? It'd be lush, but you can't do it. Right, so I've got to remove all of these here. Now, these will be Allen bolts, so just slacken them off. They'll probably be around about. How many do you reckon, Riley? What? How many do you reckon? Can you count them? One there. One here. Now, most people would say four, right? But it's probably about five. One here. One over here. Uh, three, three, three. There you go. All right, that one there. That comes off. So there's actually two to remove, oh. to actually remove that. Now, this is a bit we want to take off. Let me get you in a bit closer so you can see what's going on. Right, so we're away. So these two bolts over here, that one there, which I started to undo, that one is actually just to hold the um, the uh, exhaust on. I'm going to take that off in a minute. But see all this oil 
Let's have it all on there. Well, that's telling me we've been running a bit rich over here. So that could be part of our problem. So I'm going to remove, without bashing my camera, I'm going to remove the bolts that hold this on. Now, this may be a bit warm as it's just been running up. So go careful, especially if you've got little kids in the workshop. I mean, it's not too hot if it wasn't going to touch it. So that one there, I've got one here to do and all. Now, by, just by the amount of oil and residue I can see, this is telling me it's, it's going to be a bit gummy in here. So it could be that we're running a bit rich. And this machine will run at 50 to 1. It says so on the sticker just there. Down there, see? 51. It runs at 50 to 1. All day, every day. Okay, if you can start it. But there are, are, there are other issues that I've noticed too. And I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. And these are all issues with, that you're going to have with running. I think I've just spotted the reason why ain't, they don't want to run right. But we'll get to that in a minute. So I'm going to remove that little tiny bolt there. Now I'm going to remove that. And this is your spark arrestor here or gauze. If you can get it off. There it goes. Right. So there you go. So actually, it's not too bad. There's a little bit on there just here. So we just get a little blowtorch for that and blow that off, right? There's a few little tiny spots on there. So I'm just going to get them spots off. Some spots there, I put it just there, you can see it a bit better. So bearing in mind, it's only a small hole. You know, it blows out of these, these three holes there. And if those three are black like that, then we have got a bit of a, a thing going on there. So I'm just going to clean it up now. I'm just going to grab a pair of long nose pliers or short nose pliers, all right? And my blowtorch. And all I'm going to do, oh, wrap off my camera because we are on confined space here because Riley Boy wants to join in. I'm just going to grab my me, me long nose pliers like that. I'm going to grab my blowtorch and give it a bit of a burn up. Now, don't get, don't get too close. See, look, that's catching fire. It's got oil on it. That's got oil there. So I'm going to burn that off. Now, if you get too close, you will melt that. So just go a bit, a bit dubious with it, right? Just keep burning that oil off. And you can just introduce a very, very small, little tiny wire brush. Let's grab one behind me. Which is not the easiest thing to do with Riley Boy in the same area as me. A little tiny wire brush. Yeah, it smells of a burning office oil. I'm going to get a little tiny wire brush down here. Just to clean that up. Both sides. And get, the, get the old uh, blowtorch again. Right, now that's done, let that cool down to burn yourself. But you can now see how clean that is. You can see, actually see all the way through it. So. It was just a little tiny bit dirty, and this is the what, what we've taken off of there. Look, let me just show you that very quickly. This is what was on there. Is it all that dirt just there? That dirt there is what come out of that little tiny um, uh, gall. So that gall is now should be cool enough to touch it. Is so that can now go back. That's how dirty it was. Look at that corner. See that? That's how dirty it was. That's how clean it now is. So we'll put that back on. But I think I have just spotted something else which could be the main reason why this little cookie is not running as well as perhaps it should do. Right, now that's done, we can now put this back together with a nice new um, clean gauze in it. Now lots of people will be saying, oh, just take it out, you don't need it. Well, if you didn't need it, it wouldn't be there. That's number one, right? Um, but if um, what happens is, it all depends on where you live, really. If you get lots of dry, arid areas, then I would say you do need it because um, it's designed to stop sparks coming out and setting fire to woodlands. That's the idea. Now, let me start that one off. I'll get one in there. Uh, and that, that'll keep the galls all in place then after that. So I'll poke that in there and we'll start that one off. And that'll hold it. Now, as I say, I have just noticed something on this little tiny strimmer that will be a contributive factor to why it's not running. And I don't actually know if I can repair this now because of it. But we shall see in a minute. One more of those to go back on. Now what I'm going to do next, I just want to check condition of, um, of piston. Now this is quite a good little um, system on these because you can actually, got. I think you've got a little window on here so you can actually just inspect them 
via the window. So let me just do that up nice and tight for now. That's a, the gall's done. And that would be one of the main reasons. It, could, it, just, it, just can't, it just can't breathe, man. Can't breathe, man. So do that up. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to here next. That bolt there. So I want to check condition of piston. Condition of piston and bore will tell me if it's worth continuing or not. Right, if, it, if it's gone, you might just throw it. Well, I was going to throw it before and over the hedge. Take that out. Really small bolts on these. Right, off comes Mr. Muffler. Right. Undo that one. Off comes Muffler. So we're now going to check the exhaust port, see what that looks like. And that's okay. And now I'm just going to remove the HT lead off, off the top of the machine. And I'm just going to rotate this now, just slightly, just so I can see what's going on inside the ball here, okay? And it looks to be good on the piston. And, oh, there's a little bit of damage in the ball. Not a lot, though. There's a little line in there, I can see, but it's not excessive. We'll probably get away with that. So I'm quite happy with that. But all this oil, look, man, all that oil, that means it's been, been running really, really rich. So that can go back together now. I'm quite happy with that. But a simple check like that will tell you or not whether it's worth actually continuing or not. If you, sometimes you put them apart and the, the, the whole piston is, is just absolutely shot to pieces. It's just, just not worth doing. So, with that done, we can now move on to the next stage, which should be carburetor fuel side. We know we're getting a spark because it started earlier on, just didn't like the run, did it? So we know that's a thing. So that's good. But now we want to get involved in the fuel side of it. What's going on with the fuel? And uh, as I say, I think I just saw something which might tell me the reason why this machine don't like the run. We'll get to that next. Right, so um, just started working on this side of it here and straight away I found silicon, which is all sort of um, bunged in around the holes here. Now, I don't know about you, but these, these little fuel hoses, they're, they're not standard. And it looks like we've been getting a bit of leakage out via the hoses. Now, ideally, the quickest way to fix this would be to get a new tank. Um, because if we've got leakage through there, through the moles, then uh, it's going to be sucking too much air in. You're never, ever going to get anything right. Um, I'm going to go from there. So... What we're going to do is now we're going to try and see if we can't clean the carby up. But then, then fuel leads and tank. That's a, that's a concern to me because you know I'm just not going to be able to do what I want to do properly. Um, and most places will just turn that away because because they just say no, you, you you fiddle with it, and that's what it is. So we'll have a go, but it's a shame because having just not having not fiddled with it, we might have done something with it. But there you go. That's what it is. Um, all right, eight mil, eight mil, short extension. So I think it's already out because I used that just today. It is there, and we go to remove the carby. See what state the carby's in. Oh, is that a ten? Is that a ten millimeter on a Ryobi? Is it? Oh, it proves how long I've been working. I, I don't often. I don't work on Ryobis very much at all. I don't work on them. I'm just not a fan. I bet that stud's going to come out and all. I bet that stud comes out with that, with that carby. What a pile of poop. Right. So we'll take these nuts out. Now I'm going to take a photograph of that throttle assembly first before I do anything, because there's about 55 holes on that throttle assembly. And uh, I want to make sure it goes back in the right one if it was taken out originally in the first place. Someone might have fiddled in here and had a, had a little play with it, but we'll see in a minute. So take that nut off of there. Right. Let me grab my smartphone, which is way smarter than me. I just want to take a quick little photograph of um, that there positioning or where the hole is. That's all I want to do. So even people like me take photographs so we know what's going on. So I'm gonna remove the air box now. Oh my lord, really? 
What else? Another bolt that should just come off of here. Wowzers. Oh. Why not come off of there then? Oh. My word, my word. Come on, Matt. There you go. Right, that's off. Right, that's good. So, um, I'm going to remove these little tiny fuel lines now. I'm not. I'm not happy with them at all. They really are not right, and I, I don't think. I don't think I can do a lot with this. Really, I don't. I'm not holding out much hopes because I can't even just put a new set of fuel lines in. And these are just going to be sucking too much air. They're just way too big. I could try and plastic weld the tank and just drill two new holes. I could do that. Let's try and fill it. Maybe a JB weld, maybe. What do you reckon? A bit of JB weld on there? I could try that, I suppose. A bit of JB weld, get rid of these big fuel hoses, drill two new small holes in the tank, and then um, go from there. But it's not right. It's nowhere near right, to be fair. All right, Carby off. Off comes Carby. And it's on the second to top hole. It's good enough for me. Right, it comes off. It's got a gasket there with an impulse hole. The carbon looks quite dirty, to be fair. Right, let me get set up. I'll come back to you. Right, I just want to bring you back in because um, it's not right. So someone's been in here. So, well, obviously. Uh, take this pipe off, right? Now, if I prime that bulb, right, push down, I'm getting fuel coming out, which means this is your return. This one here is your return. This one here is your feed in. So the lower ones you feed in, if you prime it, it's pushing fuel out. And as you suck more fuel up, it fills it, push it out again. Yeah, so, so that's definitely your your fuel out pipe, your return. Right? If that's the case, then why is there no filter on the end of that one? Right? And this one here, I can definitely see a filter on the inside. Let me show you. Right, so if I push this this pipe all the way in, right? All the way in, as far as I can get it, all the way in and gone out. Now I've grabbed my forceps and go into a fuel tank the other side. Now bear in mind, this would be your return hose. Oh! I'm grab me my forceps, have a little fish around in here. So I can find the fuel hose, wherever it may be, baby. Is that it? Yeah. So there, so there on the return is your fuel hose, and as you can see, it's gummed up, blocked up. This is not right. Lots of gummy stuff on there. That's, that's hideous. However, that is on there. It's not. It's just not right. There could be some kind of glue on there. But anyway, I'm sort of going. I'm sort of stuck here now for a minute because I need to figure out what I'm going to do, and I think the best thing to do would be to. Try and cover these holes up so that um, we get decent fuel lines. I drill, I drill new holes in, but it's finding something to to cover that up with. JB Weld will probably hold it, but it's no easy fix. Or some terrible putty, maybe that that might do do the job. Some terrible putty, maybe. Um, let me have a little think and I'll come back to you. All right, so just had took, took delivery of uh, our new tumble dryer because our tumble dryer took a dump yesterday. Blew up, actually. Blew a socket. Bang! Broke the socket and also blew a fuse. Um, nasty. Um, so I'm not, I didn't muck with it. I just thought, do you know what? I'm just going to get rid of it and get a new one. So, right, this is where we are. Fuel tank. I drained the fuel out. That's been sat there. I'm going to get a little bit of sandpaper. Uh, now, I was using sandpaper just earlier on today. Um to um, do that rotor clutch. There you go, a bit of sandpaper here. So a little bit of sandpaper. All I want to do is just want to rough up these edges, just so what I'm going to put on here, just to give that a bit of a key, all right? What's a key? A key, a bit of a, a, bit of a rough, roughish sort of surface, just so the stuff I'm going to put on here yeah. kind of did. Now, I'm not going to use JB Weld. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use some stuff that is manufactured by a, by a top celebrity. Now, Riley, I don't know whether you know this celebrity I'm going to talk about in a minute, but if you know who it is, can you shout out his name in a minute? All right. Uh, Hang on, I've got, to, I've got to get it all out first. Two seconds. Uh, her name? All right. 
in a minute I'll show you. Okay. So, but it is a well-known celebrity. All right, so that's a good key on there. <laughs> We're happy. Right, so I'm going to use this stuff here. Uh, this is called putty. Terrell. Terrell putty? Hey, do dinner. Uh, what? What did you say? Hey, do dinner. <laughs> Who is that? It's Uncle Terrell. Uncle Terrell putty. Oh, yeah, Terrell and... Slippers. Slippers and... Junior. Junior, yeah. And what do they say? They do. Right, so we're going to use Terrell Putty now because Terrell Putty is water resist, uh, uh, petrol resistant, right? It is, it is good stuff. So I've got Mrs. P on the phone. Let me ring it back. Two seconds. She's ringing me up. Hold the line. So that's Mrs. P. She's just come home from, she's on her way home from work. So, right. So now Terrell Putty. This stuff is pretty good, right? In fact, it's better than pretty good. It's, it's, it's really good. So, all you got, you, you have a smell. Have a smell. Wait, huh? I swear. So, all you got to do for Terrell Putty, right, is take it, take it out of the tube. Right now, it's quite pliable. Now, all you want to do is open the bag slightly, just, it just, just enough just to open it up. Right, it, it does smell bad. It smells like it smells like Junior's underpants. Right, and oh, then all right, and then Junior just the just take a bit out right of the old the old bag. <laughs> all right, take a bit out. Now I'm going to get a size about oh, a broad bean. Now there's a little bit there that's already gone off. I'm just going to just remove that little bit. See how it's mixed there, look. Just take a bit out. Right. Yeah, it smells like Junior's underpants. Right. Bit there. Now all you want to do is just, is just knead this. Knead this a bit. Just, just knead it together. Right. Mix the two colours in. Knead it together. Right. Just wet your fingers slightly. Bit moist. Right. That's it. That's it. Now we're cooking. Right. Once you've got it sort of in a all mixed up in a in a good solid state like that, right? And, you, and you're happy with how it's gone by by sort of mixing it. I suppose it sort of activates it if you like. Mix it all up. Nice and pliable. All right. Now I'm gonna come over to the tank. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break it into two halves if I can. Put one bit down. And then I'm gonna, just gonna jam that best I can in the hole and I'm just literally going to just work that so that it blocks that hole up now as I say this stuff is petrol resistant but I want to make sure I get enough in the holes now what I might have to do I might have to come back with another bit just to make sure that we're guaranteed to have a seal and I'm going to be drilling new holes out the back here okay the second bit I've got I'm going to put straight on top and work that on top like that. Now, I'm not going to push too hard on the top bit. All right now, other people use this sort of stuff before, and it's worked really well. I'm just going to feather the edges down. Now this stuff here, you can barely drill this stuff once it's gone off. You can drill it, tap it, dye it. All right, now, I don't go too hard there because I don't, I don't want any holes sneaking through. On that tank, so just work it over, bring it back if you have to, right there, like that. And it's starting to go off, so just work it in there. Oh no, if it wants to go through the hole, you see. Now, what I could have done maybe is, um Block the tank up the other side. I'm gonna get a bit more. Block the tank up the other side, but it would have stuck to it. And this stuff sticks to the proverbial. Let me get a bit more out. As I say, I may have to just come back and put a second bit on. Let me get a bit more out of it. It's starting to drop through the tank, you see. Now I'm just gonna need this bit up. Work it, work it. That's it, lovely. Right, here we go. Plomp that on top. Sit that on there. I'm not going to push on that too hard. I went a little bit too hard last time. Sit that on top. Right, 
Now, less, less mucking about with it. I think it's going to be better. That's it. Now, that's got to go hard now. How long do you leave that for? Let's have a look here. Um, it says here, hardening begins usually within the first two minutes. Material can be dry, uh, drilled, filled, tapped, machined, etc. after three hours. For a smooth surface, rub, um, hand rub with tap water or use a damp cloth uh, prior to handling. All right, so I'm hoping that's got it. Just leave it alone, Mick. Stop touching it. All right, now once that's gone off, we're going to be happy. All right, now. It's not the prettiest of things. It's not the prettiest looking, right? But this is going to be better than um, what we had before. Uh, it it, sti it sticks to anything, the stuff. It, it is good stuff. I wouldn't use it if it wasn't, right? So we're going to go for that first. And then what I'm then going to do is once that's all done, um, I'm then going to drill holes in the back of this tank just here, if I can get them. Maybe maybe one there, one's alongside it. I'm going to put two brand new um, hoses in there, proper hoses, fuel hoses for strimmers, two-stroke ones. Um, and that will get rid of any uh, fuel issues we may have had with those big long pipes because those pipes just they just weren't right now the next thing i've got to do is um clean the carb because there's no filter on the inlet pipe which is the bottom one there's no um filter on there so the carburetor has got to come off and it's got to be cleaned because no filter on it which means dirt in the carb so let's get the carburetor off and then uh, get that cleaned up right up on the bench and uh, carburetor now is now here. Let's take it apart, have a quick little look. Just want to um, get a little tiny screwdriver. And we'll go in here first. Take this apart, because you know, it's, it's, as there's no filter on it, um, it's sucked up all, all, all manner of uh, foreign objects. It's probably got more dirt in it than what's in Terrell's teeth. Right, so. I don't look too shabby, but look in here. Look, looky, looky, looky. See that in there? Can you see all that? That there be dirt in there. That's dirt in there. Now, what I'll tell you is, is that that definitely will not run all the time there is dirt in there, okay? I'm going to remove that very, very gently um, with my dental pick. Why is it I start talking about Terrell and the next thing I'm using dental picks? What's that all about? Um, so, in here, I've got a very, very small little filter, a gauze. All right, we're going to remove that very, very gently indeed without breaking it. No, he's not Tell's, Tell's teeth picks. I guess I don't want to break that. Let's remove it if I can. Cool. She is fiddly, baby. Look, look at that. Look, look. See that dirt on there? Look, you see it? Look, big bit of dirt on there. That can come off of there, look. Now, this is one of the main reasons why two strokers don't run. There's a big, big, in, in the grand scheme of things, there's a big lump of metal in there. What is that? See that? Look, look. Ooh, knock it off. Look. See that big lump on my thumb? Look, that was in there. So that can come off now. That's dirty. Bit of carburetor cleaner. Right, I'm nearly right out of carburetor cleaner, guys, and I mean I'm right out. You might have to check out my Amazon wish list, guys. Right. Am I out? I don't think I am. There'll be nothing there for the job. Yeah, there you go. Now, I can't use my air compressor, because that's knackered. Until my spark has been around today. Let's try and get this cleaned up. Tilt my old thing back. All right, that's done. All right, that's pretty good. Now, I'm going to give it a little tiny scratch up. Look, 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 looky, looky. See that, look? See that just there? That was in there. And that's why this Ryobi wasn't, wasn't running. There's still a little bit of dirt in there. 
Where's me uh, double de forte? I can speak French, you know. Um, right. I'll sort of clean up. You can flatten these off and give them a little tiny rub of your finger. You know, just to get all that dirt out. Because there's, there's dirt all in there. But now it's starting to run through. So I'm happy with that now, all right? Now that stands half a chance of running, okay? But because that was dirty birdie, I know that the, the diaphragm is not gonna be much better. So we're gonna go diaphragm next. Let's have a look at what diaphragm's doing. Now he took this, the fellow who, who had this messaged me, said he went to his mate's house, I think his mate's a mechanic, and his mate, his mate said, um, yeah, please, Mum, yeah, it'd be great, yeah. His mate said his mechanic friend looked at it. A diaphragm is done. Now, I had a chat with Conker last week. Said, people say about diaphragm, it looks okay. Plenty of movement, but look at the wrinkles in it. If it's got more wrinkles in it, then, the, then you know what, then take it out. Right, that's no good. See how many wrinkles there are. See, look, and see, see, see how... how, how how stiff that is, it's not doing anything. So let's leave that there. How big's our nipple? Oh, only a small nipple. Right, let me find my, um, let me find my uh, little box of uh, diaphragms. Now lots of you have been asking, Mick, where did you get your box of diaphragms from? I can't remember, it was eBay, but it was a little pack I bought and uh, I, I can't find them now. Right, so we want a little tiny diaphragm with a little nipple. Uh, big nipple. See, that's, see, see that nipple there? Look, that's big nipple. That's no good to us. We want a little nipple. They're big nipples. They're big nipples. Ooh, what is that one? This one looks to be quite good. Let's look at that one. What's that in there? Let's have you out. What are you? What are you? Little nipple. What do you reckon, guys? It's around the wrong way there, but uh, it might not matter. All depends if, that's, if that hole is workable. Let's have a little look, I think it is. That hole there. That don't go nowhere. No, it don't. So that little hole there, that just goes into there. So, there's no reason why me thinks, hmm, cannot. Maybe if we put it around the right way, what do you think, guys? That's the old one. That's the new one. Does your dog bite? It is not my dog. Right, so happy with that, right? That's the new diaphragm. It's going to go in. Same size nipple, right? Same size nipple on the old plate, look. See? Happy. New nipple, old one. The old ones, you do that. Get rid of those. Right, now, to make sure that we're running, you can now pour a little bit of fluid, that's French, that is, into here. Right, sit it in there. Now, that should stay there. That fluid shouldn't move, right? Now, if you come underneath here and you push this little tiny rocker in, that fluid will run out. So fill it up. Fill it up. Don't push it in yet. Right, just so all bulbs go away. Now, when I activate that little tiny rocker, you see the fluid disappears. Yeah, so that's running. That's good. Right, so we're happy with that. Um, just going to put a few little tiny spurts of WD-40 where it needs it. That's coming out the back. I can feel it hit my finger. It's all good. A general tidy. Go around the other side. We're going to go in here with it. Anywhere there's a hole where you, where you think you can get, you can get um, some kind of um, liquid in, hit it. Right? And we're pushing out all types of muck and dirt. And all sorts of so we're happy with that. That's now cleaned. Right? We're happy. Um, so the diaphragm can go back on now. That's the new one, not the old one. Diaphragm cover and go back on now. It all goes together, guys. And girls. Uh, two little tiny screws. I think they have a small screws. I can't remember now. Uh, they have a small screws or big screws? I think they have a small screws. Right, they go in there. Now, whilst I've been yakking away here, I'm waiting for me, my terrible party to go off, but it wants two or three hours, so I may have to come back to this video tomorrow. Which means I've got John Deere as well to do it more and all now. Right, put that on. 
for that one. Right, we're happy there, right? So now we're going to the next bit, which would be putting the galls back in. All you want to do is get the galls up the right way around and just gently, and I mean gently, gently slide it in. Now we all know what happens if you put it in with too much force, right? You've got to put it in gently. You can't just go ramming it all the way in. Ask me how I, ask me how I know. Right. That's in there, and I'm being so gentle, and I'm 20 odd stone. Right, that's all the way in. That's nice. Um, it's not, there isn't normally a lot wrong with the pump side. Not generally, right? I've, it's very rare there's, a, there's an issue with the pump side. Very rare. Let me clean up. Oh, right, happy? Right. So now we're going to fit this back on. That can go onto here. That's French again. Right, happy with that. Two longer screws. One in there, one in there. Right, let me do them up. And that's your carburetor serviced. Right, so it's had a new it's new diaphragm. It's had the screen the screen done, and it is the screen that would be the cause of bulk of all these problems. And the reason the screen is blocked is because it had no fuel filter on the fuel hose. That's for diagnosis and repair. All right. So we might have to tune these yet as well. I don't know if anyone's mucked with these tuners. I'm not a fan of these tuners, but that's what it is. I generally just remove those and just do it manually. You can just take them off, but we'll see how we get on. Um, so that's now done. Apart from a Terrell putty, which is now over here. Let me bring you back over here. Tuna underpants. It smells like tuna's underpants, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A funny name. <laughs> it's a funny name, isn't it? Tuna, I didn't have yeah, so that that still won't be quite there yet, but it, but it is it is starting. Listen, you have a listen. It is starting to go. That was about another two hours. But I'm, I'm just going to leave that be. I'm not going to touch it. I might come back to it this afternoon once my electrician's been for my compressor to sort the sort of fuse out for that. I'll be bored. But listen, it's starting to go. So it's not there yet. I don't want to muck with it. So join us back in a couple of hours and we'll uh, finish putting this Roby back together. Right, so it's the next day and my Terrell putty, let me move my microphone set out of the way, just as you come down. I've got about four videos to do today to finish off. So that is now solid. Now the concern is, is that it is petrol resistant, but what is the sticking ability to that? That's my only concern I've got, but I'm hoping we give it a go. But it is a temporary repair. It may last two years, um, but I'm gonna say to the bloke, you know, I've done a temporary repair best I can, but you want to try and find yourself another tank for these. These are readily available, these bits. You always find them down with dumps and stuff, so they're not a problem, but you want it back. So I'm going to repair it as is, and then um, we'll go from there. So hopefully it'll hold. It's a, it's a good test for the old Terrell putty. Plastic with petrol and what have you, but it has definitely taken. I can't, I can't move it, so it's, uh, it's, it's there, so... Just want to double check inside the tank, make sure there's no bits and pieces floating about. But my next job to do will be to fit the carburetor back on, which has been cleaned. Uh, and that, that went on the second hole, didn't it? I remember that from yesterday already, it's good. So that can go onto there. That's lush. Um, I've got to fit fuel hoses on yet as well. So let me grab my, grab my um, two-stroke box with me hoses, and I want to drill um some holes into the back of a tank to now take the new fuel hoses which are going to be the right size so these aren't going to be these massive big big things so i want a decent size fuel hose that's going to fit nicely on the on the carb so that's that's not a bad little size let's look at that yeah that'll go on there nice that go on there nice too. yeah right so that's that's gonna be the fuel hose i'm going to use I'm going to find a drill that's just slightly smaller than that. Drill just down the back of here um, to take these take these fuel lines in. Nice snug fit. I have to push them in really tight, and then that that will do it. So that's a nice fuel hose. That is. I've got a slightly thicker one too, which I could use, but I will use a thinner one first, I think, because um, yeah, too big. Because if I make a mistake, I can always go up a size. So that's the size I'm going to be using. So I want one for a return, which is going to be oh, about that long. So we're going to cut that off now. So that'll be my return. So there's my return one. I'll go on to there. 
and that's that's only just literally got to sit just inside inside the tank which would be nice and then one longer one which initially is going to be a bit of a pain in the bum because i've got to i've got to push it through have it sucked all the way around to the other end of the tank fit the filter and then put it back so i can't cut that one yet so i need a, a drill bit now um just big enough to take um the fuel line that's in question and i reckon that one there will be just about the kitty so let's get my drill <coughs> take that off and we're going to put a two new holes in and i will be doing a tank flush beforehand so let's um Let's put that one just down the side of there. Careful, careful not to make no splits. Right, that's gone in. And I want to put another one just alongside it. there so that will now be the two holes for my fuel lines a little tiny v in there slot that into there now that is going to be just a little bit too loose just a touch so i'm going to have to go up just a touch on outside diameter so i want to make sure that we're that we've got a nice solid fit Otherwise, it's all it's all it's all for nothing. Otherwise, I just feel that that is going to leak just a just a touch. That one might be all right, but you want it really really tight. So let me just find a slightly wider outside diameter on this one, and I'll come back to you. Right, I've now got. Uh, let me turn that light on. We've got a light on the back. Yeah, it's not on. Uh, that might make a bit a bit more pleasurable viewing. There you go. Right, and that's going to go into there, and that's a nice tight fit, that is. Oop. Get that in. So as you can see, it's a real tight fit. But that is what you want. You want it so that it's not going to cause any leaks. Because if it's leaking, it's sucking air. All right, so that's that one done. I've got to get two of those. So I'm going to cut that one. It's a bit longer than what I need. That'll be about there. And then that same piece there, I'm going to cut that in a bit once I've got that fitted. Because that's got to go all the way through a tank. That's going to be an absolute pig to fit that. So I'll put a little bit of oil on there just to run that through. And then um, once they're fitted, I'll come back to you. Right, I'm not going to lie. That was an absolute pig. What I had to do, I had to cut um, about three, four inches of, of, of pipe um, so that it was tapered because uh, because that, that is a really, really tight fit. It hasn't collapsed the hose in the hole, but it is a really, really tight fit. But it, it's got to be that tight, you know. There's some of the JB, uh, some of the JB well that, that was, um, or Terrell Putty, that was uh, pushed through, um, that had fallen in the tank. So I flushed the tank out, but now <clears throat> I can now fit this fuel filter onto this fuel hose, which now goes all the way through. So I'm going to fit that on. It's got to have a filter on there. It didn't have a filter beforehand. Let me just fit that. Let's get that put on there. It's going to be easier to seven down without pinching my fingers or catching myself. Let's get in there. It's made difficult because this is quite a thick sort of um, uh, walled pipe, but that's what you want. So now, now that's um, got a fuel filter on it, we can now pull that pipe back. And you can see how hard I'm having to pull it to get that pipe to sit into the deepest part of the fuel tank, which is going to be roughly right in the middle. That's where you want it, okay? So that's good. So now I can now turn the strimmer back around, round we go. 
bop, put that back down there. And now I can now marry that fuel hose back up to the inlet, which is going to be, oh, make it about right, cut that about there. And then that will then sit up onto the carburetor there. And that is two new fuel lines now fitted. Um, round the right way this time as well, so we're actually going to be fueling the machine correctly, which is great. So that's now, as I squeeze that, that is now pushing the fuel through the return, which is the nearest pipe. I don't know if you guys can see that. Through the nearest pipe, but see there's, there's a bubble there, that's going to push that down. So we've actually got that, got that now running correctly. So now it stands a much better chance of actually doing something. So now we're in a position where we're going to start putting it back together. So that'd be cool. So um, that's got to go onto there. Hopefully nothing will be hindered via um, the, uh, the terrell putty I've used. That sits onto there lush. Cut of 10 minutes. I've got to find the bits and bobs because obviously I've had bits apart for a day and it's been on, my bench is my, my bench looks like a like a war zone. Uh, that's a 10 mil, wasn't it, on there, from what I remember? Yeah, that's a 10. Just gonna start that off. Let's get a bit of tissue. Because what's happening is I can't quite get the nut onto the um onto the, the bolt there because my socket is a little bit too too long. I might just change over to a 10 mil short wall short wall socket, that might help me out a touch. Uh, nine. Let's try ten. That's just a bit short, a bit more short or wall, so that, that might help me out. Get it started at least. Yeah, that's better. Get the second one on. That's good. Now that's on. I can change that socket back over to that, to that long one. And then we can nick them ones up. And that should be tank repaired, new fuel lines fitted, fuel filter fitted with the correct, uh, correct orientation, carburetor clean, new, new diaphragm in there, the, the screen's been done. So now all bar, just a quick little tune, I think, Quick little tune, we should be somewhere close to, to doing this. So all I've got to do now is just get this carburetor to sit down nice and tight, put the air box back on, and just reattach the rear of the cowling um, of the rover back together. That's only just two or three bolts. Then we'll fill it up with petrol, should be 50 to one. And uh, hopefully, once we've tested the, make sure we've got no fuel leaks, we should be good to go. If it does leak fuel, it's gonna be a new tank. It's as simple as that, but maybe a quick little repair with some terrell putty, might have saved this machine. It'd be great if it has. Right, so what I've done is, filled it up with fuel, no fuel leaks, okay? But I want to show you what I've just done. I've just removed the tuning restrictors. So on here, they have a little restrictor, okay? On one on each. And they sit in here, okay, just in there. And they, and they block them up so you can't physically tune this carburetor. So I'll just remove those, little tiny flathead screwdriver, high side on the outside, low side on the inside, and that'll just enable me to tune this carburetor a bit more, okay? Because we don't like you mucking with the tuners, but sometimes you just have to. So let me just put it back on the old perch. Now I'm gonna try and fire it up, no fuel leaks, so it's holding. Um, turn it on, on the choke, we give it a pull, give it a start. I fired. So now I'm going to try and tune this carburetor on the high side.
something out there somewhere. It's just very, very smoky. That's because this machine has not run for so long and it's been running too rich. I've had to lean the machine out on the high side to turn the screw in to lean it out. We've got a lot of oil on this machine that over time it's going to have to burn off, so that's why it's a bit smoky. So let me just continue running it. I'm going to try and um, get it to run better on idle by adjusting the low side screw, which is the one nearest the engine, and then redraw the tick over. Let me just run that through you because you'll be saying, Mick, you're, you're saying it, but not understanding it, okay? And so many people say to me, oh, I've got the confidence to, to work on two strokes. They're just a bit different, that's all. So all I've done is, initially, to keep the machine running, this is your tick over screw, okay? Just this one here, okay? Now that one, all that does is that screw there, it goes in against the, the butterfly and it just forces the butterfly open a touch so it, it will idle. What you want to do eventually is screw this in so that the machine will idle and then tune it, gun the throttle, and then tune this one left or right, normally leaner. Um, it, it depends though, it depends. Um, and then once you um, find the sweet spot on the, on the high side, you can then go over to the low side and um, tune this one, but then you must bring this screw back out. Once this screw has been taken out slightly, you're then tuning it on this one here, okay? You want it to tick over on this screw, not this one quite so much, okay? So, we're getting there. You can hear by the engine revs, it is picking up. So we are, we are sort of winning. I need to run it off a choke fully, and then we should get a much better result. So let's pull it over, start it. Off choke. concern of course is the smoking that's going on it does run 50 to 1 and it is exactly 50 to 1 um, but there's so much oil in that exhaust it's just got to burn off um, the piston the ball look good and uh, there's still no fuel leaks showing at all so we, we're good on fuel side let me just show you because I know you go oh yeah you're lying Mick oh I'm not lying I'll tell the truth if it's a fuel leak I'll just get the ta new tank for it but at the moment full tank juice absolutely zero fuel leaks going on Okay, nothing there at all. So that's a good little fix. So I'm going to stop and start that throughout the day. Hot and cold, hot and cold, hot and cold, hot and cold. Try and get it to stop smoking. If I can get it to stop smoking, then uh, we could be onto a bit of a winner here. So nice little, well, I say nice, the words nice and Ryobi. They don't tend to go together. A Ryobi um, that wasn't running or was particularly difficult to start and to run now starts, stops, runs as it should do, and uh, all that sort of work can be done inside your own house or in, in your own workshop, in your shed or in your garden and be done for cheap, you know, cheap, cheap, cheap. Just, just have the confidence to work on these little two strokers because you can get them up and running. So there you go. 
If you enjoy this sort of video, mix miles and my man, then hit the subscribe button, whack the old bell, hit notifications to all. That way you'll be told next time up another video. And I look forward to this episode of Mixed Mars very, very soon. But to end guys and girls, much more importantly, take it easy.